Good morning everybody and welcome to another week in my kitchen. I hope you are all well and had a lovely weekend. Um, there are a lot of new people here so hello and welcome to a week in my kitchen. Um, today is Monday, the first day of the week and that means I'll be doing my food shop today. Um, I did a click and collect at Sainsbury's so I need to go get that in about 20 minutes or so. Um, so Sophia's just gone to school and I'm on my own. Uh, for breakfast we had, what do we have? We had jam on toast and it was the last jar of my homemade jumble berry jam. So I'll need to make some more of that soon. And we had it with this really yummy butter from a local deli that we picked up at the weekend. And in Sophia's lunchbox today, um, we didn't put the farmer section in today because, well, actually, I was gonna say it's not cold, it's June, but it's freezing at the moment. This morning was seven degrees and the wind outside is bitter. Nevertheless, I just did her, cause we were on rations, cause I've not been food shopping, uh, a cheese and ham sandwich with some chopped up cucumber, tomatoes, two chocolate biscuits and some Pringles. Not the healthiest lunch, but a lunch that she is gonna absolutely love. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to drink this lovely cup of tea and then I'll go pick up my food shop and I will show you everything that I bought. <laughs> It was quite a big and expensive food shop this week, but some weeks they just are. Um, I'm really loving the gold top milk. I've done a lot of research on it and I'm so glad we switched to it. There's nothing for you, little boy. Look at the tail wag. I mean, you can have some ham. Uh, lots of ham, some fresh meat. Not too many crisps this week. Loads of bloody toilet roll because we went through 12 rolls last week in about four days. I have no idea what's wrong with my family. Here's all like the... What you want? Hi! <laughs> Here's all the non-foodie bits. Yeah, and if you want to see what I'll be feeding my family this week, you can go on my website and tap on weekly menus. I will leave that below and I'm going to put this away and hang my washing out. I'm playing with my dog because he obviously wants some attention, don't you? Look at the waggy tail. So for lunch, I just popped a pizza in the oven and had it with some leftover bits and bobs from the fridge. We're really busy at the moment, repainting our house and doing lots in the garden. So I needed something quick and filling. And then I had a well-deserved afternoon tea. So it's time to pick Sophia up from school now and she's going to be hungry. So I've chopped up some peppers, some leftover pizza and I've got some hummus for her to enjoy when she gets in. Moving on to dinner time. So we are having like an Asian cold noodle salad and I've put together a lovely dressing in this jam jar which I just shook up. I'll list the ingredients below but it's mainly, oh my dog's barking, peanuts, soy sauce, sesame oil, garlic, ginger and things like that. So I've got some cold noodles in here and I've sliced up finely some peppers, carrots and spring onions and I've just tossed that all together in the noodles with the peanut sauce and I've just also toasted off some peanuts in some honey and soy for a nice crunchy topping. This went down really, really well and we had enough for leftovers for Sophia's lunch the next day, which is perfect. Good morning, everybody. 
I've woken up shattered today, so I'm gonna need all the cups of teas that I can get. Also, did you see how gorgeous that milk is? I need to shake it really, because it's got all the creamy bits on top. Anyway, for breakfast this morning, Sophia had banana Biscoff porridge, and in her lunch, she had the leftover noodles from last night with raspberry, mango, strawberry, some cheese biscuits, and a baby bell. I've put it in her thermos, but it isn't actually hot. I just thought it would be somewhere nice to store the noodles and keep them all together. And for my breakfast, I wasn't particularly hungry, but I was off to the gym with my husband, so I just had some organic yogurt, fruit and healthy bits on top. Got back from the gym absolutely starving. My husband made some scrambled eggs, and I had cheese with peanut butter on toast. And I've just started putting butter with my peanut butter, and it is life-changing. Then I did a couple hours in the garden and was so hungry, but it was pretty much time to do the school run. So I just had some cheese and biscuits with some delicious local cheeses. And then before I knew it, it was time to start prepping dinner. So tonight we are having jacket potatoes and these are massive. I don't think you can grasp the scale of them from this video. So I've started off by pricking them all over and then I'm going to go over the top with some organic extra virgin olive oil. I want to be pretty generous with this. And then I'm going to sprinkle both of those with some Cornish sea salt crystals. Again, I want to be pretty generous with this because this will ensure that the jacket potatoes get a really nice crispy skin. Hello! popping the lid back on the salt and then I'm going to pop those in the microwave because these are so big they took about 16 minutes but I want them to be pretty much cooked and soft and then I'm going to pop them into the oven to crisp up the skin I put them in at 200 degrees and I think for about 12 minutes I'm just popping all that extra olive oil on top because I don't want to waste it and it will help with the crispiness and here they are golden and delicious from the oven as you can see that skin is so super crispy it's just me and Sophia tonight so that's one for me and one for her they look so good so I'm just going to cut them open to let some of the steam out and then I'm going to go in with a really generous portion of butter and spread that all about this is a step that you should not miss out when making jacket potatoes and then I'm going to go on top with some baked beans, which I just warmed up in the microwave because I was feeling a bit lazy. And then on top, we've got loads and loads of extra mature cheddar cheese. And there we are. Nice, easy dinner because I was exhausted. And we just enjoyed those while watching Bluey on the telly. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day it is now Wednesday and I have a full day in the kitchen planned. I'm going to do nothing but cook and bake and eat all day and I can't wait. So for breakfast, um, I had fried eggs on toast, although I broke one of my eggs and I was so sad about it. And Sophia wasn't hungry at all, so she just had yogurt with some bananas, strawberries, honey and some of that uh, healthy stuff sprinkled on top the chia seeds and whatnot and in her lunchbox today she had some jacket potato the same fruit as yesterday the mango the strawberries and the raspberries because she ate them all so I thought I would do it again so that she probably won't eat it today and two jammy dodgers so today Sorry, if you see me looking out in the back garden, it's because we've got a family of robins out there. Now, I always thought that robins were like solitary animals, but there's a family out there and oh, it melts my heart. There's the, oh, they're on the washing line right now. And like, I'm guessing the daddy or the mummy's like grooming the baby. Oh, it is. It's precious to see. But anyway, so today I've got so much I want to do. I'm going to start with the fun stuff. I really want to make some tiny little shortbread cookies. I want to do chocolate chip and lemon and white chocolate, I think. And then I need to make a chicken curry because I want some for Sophia's lunches for the next few days. I really want to make some iced tea. I'll go into that a bit later. I might do that first. Oh my God, the robin. One, two, three, four. There's definitely four. 
and I feel like there's a sparrow in with their little family as well oh anyway what was I saying I want to make some peach ice no just sweet iced tea I'll talk about that more when I get there I'm losing my train of thought because he's oh I got the robins I can't cope <laughs> I would show you them if I open my back door they're just gonna fly off oh they're in the long grass and they're frolicking anyway I'm so oh they're so close to me right now and the window's open okay right sweet iced tea I will talk about that when I get there and then I want to make a bean salad for lunch which doesn't sound particularly delicious but I think it will be so let's just get started on those cookies and I'll finish yabbering but truth be told I'm just gonna watch these robins for ages and make a cup of tea <laughs> Right, after that babble, I am going to start with making this tea. Now, when I was in America, I constantly ordered sweet iced tea. And I think this is the tea bags that they would have used. And I've been watching loads of Southern American TikTokers make their sweet iced tea. And they just use sugar and this. So I'm going to give it a go. So I've decided to go in with four tea bags. I don't know the exact measurements and everybody that was following online just sort of put four in so I went with four too. I'm also having a nightmare here thinking I can't really leave the tags in there because it might ruin the tea so they're happily bobbing on the side. Now these seven TikTokers were putting a ton of sugar in so I've just gone for two tablespoons and then I can always add more. Also when I squeeze the tea bags I realised those labels came off. So I'm going to pop this in the fridge now and hope for the best. Okay, moving on to the biscuits. I just used the shortbread recipe that's on my website and I made the original dough in the mixer because the less you handle this, the nicer your cookies are. So I've just split my mix in half. I've put chocolate chips in one half and I'm grating lemon zest in the other. And now I'm just rolling these out and I didn't have a cookie cutter small enough so I just used this little jar. Some biscuits got stuck inside but it still did the job for me. So now I've done those lemon ones, I'm just going to pop them onto their baking tray so I've got room to do the chocolate chip ones. So I'm just rolling these out too, cutting them out. I've got a couple extra of the chocolate chip ones because the chocolate chips are bulked out the dough, if that makes sense. And they are going on the tray too. They don't need to be spaced out because these won't spread. So I'm just going to pop these in the oven. They look so good already. And this is then baked. Um, I forgot to show, but I sprinkled sugar on top of the chocolate ones as soon as they came out. And now I'm just going to drizzle white chocolate on top of my lemon ones. Truth be told, I underbaked these a little bit. They could have done with an extra minute, but they still taste delish. Right, moving on to the next one. I'm gonna make a bean salad for tonight's dinner. So I've got those organic white beans, some roasted red peppers, some char-grilled mixed vegetables, some peppers, a shallot, and tomatoes, mozzarella pals, and some diced cured meat. So in the bowl, I've got them with onions, yellow pepper, red pepper, tomatoes, the organic white beans, the char-grilled mixed vegetables, the flame roasted peppers, looking so good in there uh, the mozzarella pearls and then the chopped meats and I'm going to give this all a good mix a huge helping of sea salt and some black pepper and then I'm going to get on with my dressing honestly I am eyeballing this and I'm really fortunate that it turned out nice first time and there we are that's dinner all made this is actually so delicious despite how it looks in this bowl and now onto the chicken curry. So I've just deboned some chicken thighs and they've been marinated in some creme fraiche, madras powder and lemon to tenderize the chicken. And I basically just fried it off until the sauce got really, really thick. And boiled up some white rice and some frozen peas and there's two portions now for Sophia's lunch. Now with the leftover thighs, I've popped them in the slow cooker along with some onions and garlic topped up with water and I'm gonna leave this on low overnight to make a really lovely chicken stock and I'll link that recipe below for you if you wanna try it out too. Okay, so for my lunch, I'm literally just having some tarama salata and breadsticks and a cup of tea because now I'm gonna move on to making some granola. So I've got chia seeds, some organic sunflower seeds, honey, extra virgin olive oil and some lovely uh, porridge oats. Basically, again, I'm eyeballing all of this into the bowl. It tastes different every time I make this and I love it. 
but you kind of want to get it to this consistency before you bake in the oven for about oh how nice does this look on the table by the way um yes yeah, so i'm going to bake that in the oven for about 12 minutes and there it is coming out looking oh. all golden and delicious and now i need to go and do the school run so Sophia is home from school and she is more than happy to help herself to a few biscuits as soon as she got in and my granola is now cooled so I've just popped it in this little jar ready for breakfast and this little bit didn't fit so I'm having it now with some yogurt. And now on to dinner which you guys was so delicious and so was my iced tea. It needed to be a touch sweeter but other than that it's 10 out of 10. Good morning everybody, it's now Thursday and Sophia has requested her favourite chocolate porridge with raspberries for breakfast. And for her lunch today, she's having the chicken curry we made yesterday with a baby bell, cheese biscuits, cucumber and hummus. And for my breakfast, I had the homemade granola with Rachel's organic Greek yogurt, fruit and honey and bits and bobs on top. Then I headed over to my nanny's for the day and for lunch, we had a random lunch of tempura prawns, peas, tomatoes and chips and a kind of dry apple strudel. She didn't make it, I think it was from Iceland. And it was so nice to have a lovely, cozy, comforting food because the weather outside was crap. And then I come home and sorted out last night's chicken stock, which is looking delicious. I strained it and popped it in a freezer bag. And as I said before, I'll leave the recipe below for that one. And it was still pouring down with rain. So after school, we come home and got our PJs on and had pizza on the sofa. And I had mine with a little bit of that bean salad. And it is now Friday and on the breakfast menu this morning we were having fried egg sandwiches and we still have some of that lovely butter left and they were delish. And in Sophia's lunchbox she's got the other helping of the chicken curry, some of the homemade biscuits from earlier on in the week, pineapple and cucumber. I've decided that a fried egg sandwich looked good so I made one for myself too. This is our absolute family favourite breakfast and it's something we always have on a Christmas morning so it felt like a nice treat to have it on a school day today. Hi! There's my fried egg and there's my new pea plate which I got from Emma Bridgewater. So yeah, don't know why I filmed so much of this this morning but here is me serving it up. I spruced up the table, I cut some fresh mint from the garden and I put on my favourite tablecloth. And then I headed out to a cafe with my friend for lunch, but I didn't fancy lunch. I just really fancied cake. And I had a nightmare of a time choosing because they had so many good cakes. But ultimately I decided I wanted the Dime Bar Cheesecake. So I've just picked up the little girl from school and I'm gonna make this recipe I've seen all over Southern TikTok. It's basically like a one cup recipe. So it's one cup of sugar. I've gone with golden and normal white sugar. One cup of flour. They don't use self-raisin flour, but I chose to just to make this dessert a bit lighter. And one can of fruit cocktail in light syrup. So basically that all just goes in a bowl. You mix it together, you pop it in the oven, and then you get a nice delicious cake, supposedly. So we thought that we would give it a go. Here's Sophia's little mixing spoon and she has the honour of mixing it all up. And to be fair, she did quite a good job of keeping it all in the bowl. It got to this point now I was thinking I might need a bigger bowl, but we persevered and yeah, we got it all mixed in nicely. And there's the dog sulking because he's not getting any. So we let it get to sort of like this consistency before putting it in the oven. And you know what, this is a great recipe for kids because it's so easy for them to do. They can weigh out all the ingredients themselves. So in the oven, it probably took about 40 minutes to be cooked through. And this is the final result. I decided to serve it with some of our homemade ice cream. Now this is a really easy, simple and such a delicious recipe. I'll link it below. Uh, the cake was okay. I'm not gonna say it's the best thing I've ever ate in the world. But you know what, like I just said, it's a really good recipe to make with kids and it was edible and we all ate it and it was warm and it was comforting. So yeah, I'd give it a five out of 10. Now, slightly out of order, this is our dinner. So my husband made a spag bowl this morning. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to film it. I was upstairs doing my little girl's hair at the time and we just left it in the slow cooker all day to blip away. 
So we just had this on top of some linguine and I really didn't salt the pasta water enough. It definitely needed a little bit more. And then I served this up in a chavy style, as my husband said, we've just put in the meat on top of the pasta. And I know what he means. Traditionally, it'd be more mixed in. And we just had it with loads of grated fresh parmesan and it was delicious. And if you got all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.